the vast expanses of the mind about which we know next to nothing. From the depths of the subconscious come visions, intuition, paranormal happenings, phenomena that science is just beginning to recognize and explain. It was a very magical experience. After I had gone through the tunnel of sand that I buried, buried down into, I immediately went came over the horizon. It was a huge dragon, and um, this made me a little uh, wary. And it came towards me. Running in a forest, and the forest was beautiful. Um, it had very high trees, and something was running after me. It was not a person or anything. It was just a feeling of something chasing after me. These students haven't taken drugs. Instead, it's a research experiment into altered states of mind. And these intriguing experiences can happen to us all. One of the most dramatic ways we access our subconscious is also the most common, through our dreams. The psychologist Carl Jung said that a dream is a little hidden door in the most secret recesses of the psyche. Dreams are an altered state where we shut out the conscious world and roam the hidden vastness of the subconscious, its terrors, its delights. Our dreams are unique. Each of us explores images and emotions from our own lives. But we also share many common themes, a sense of falling or floating, being chased or trapped underwater. These sensations are clues to the workings of the inner mind. When we wake, the conscious mind takes over and our dreams vanish. But there are other ways to alter consciousness. We don't have to be asleep. We can learn to focus the mind, enabling superhuman feats. The ancients knew this. Pounding rhythm and whirling flames. This is the Polynesian fire dance. drums drive the ritual and focus concentration. A force they call mana is coming, spirit power to transcend the laws of nature. The dancer shuts down sensory input, even pain, to focus the spirit energy of mind and body. It's an ancient demonstration of heightened consciousness, a display that endows the dancer with power and influence over others. Normal consciousness is very different. Every second, information about the world arrives in the brain from our senses. The mind interprets it and builds a model, selecting what we need to be conscious of to function in the world around us. Of course, our brains make predictive models about the world all the time. They usually serve us well. But because they're predictions, they can be completely wrong. Look at this image of a face. As it rotates, we become confused until we realize it's an illusion. The brain is fooled because its model for faces says they usually protrude forwards. But it's 
squeeze your hands together as tight as you can. Fingers binding, clutching, clawing, clasping, never looking away from your thumbs until I say that you... Our perception of the world can be tricked in many ways. Sometimes we even agree to trick ourselves. Try and pull your hands apart now, Victoria, but they won't come apart. They're absolutely locked. You can look away from your hands, but still they won't come apart. Sit up, look around the room, show the people around you. You can't get your hands apart. Martin Taylor is a stage hypnotist. He believes hypnosis is another form of focused concentration. A modern-day ritual where suggestible people agree to suspend disbelief and act out fantasies. Absolutely wonderful. If you take your chair back into the line, give her all a big round of applause. That's really great. Fantasies suggested by the hypnotist. You know it's you doing it. You know you're doing it because you want to do it. What you don't understand is why you want to do it. Martin picks good subjects who can shut down their usual rational faculty and do what they are told. He suggests a new model for their minds to use, and they do as he says. This kind of hypnotism wouldn't work if the subjects didn't want to play along. This mind game is just for entertainment. But there's a serious side to hypnotism. The deep hypnotic trance can open the doors of the inner mind, allowing the subconscious world to emerge. Instinct, our sixth sense, strange feelings and emotions, joy, blind panic, gut reactions, phobias and fears, intuitions. The power of the subconscious is vast. In the hands of a professional, hypnosis can be used to trawl these murky depths. In your inner mind. Helen Kennedy is a hypnotherapist. She's using a technique called hypnotic regression, leading the patient back in time to remember childhood, infancy, and even further. Tessa is being led back to her own death in a former lifetime. It's hurting. Just work oh. through it. Just allowing your inner mind to work through this problem. Oh. What's hurting Tessa? Oh, my back. Deeper and deeper. <laughs> Deep. What dark deeper. Pandora's box is this? Is this evidence for reincarnation? Or is the hypnotist just leading her along, planting the suggestion of a previous life so the patient's mind fills in the details? What I want you to do, what I want you to do, Tessa, is what I want you to do is to understand that you can work through this. It's working through this, Tessa. Regression therapy is controversial. It's been blamed for false memories. Still, many experts believe the technique is a useful one, a way to reach into the depths of the subconscious. You have experienced the death of that lifetime. A realm filled with memories and feelings whose origins we can't always know. Be free. Free. Ah. 